Okay, so a couple pointers or kind of key ideas from the dagger soliloquy in uh, Act 2, Scene 1. The first point is that there is clear knowledge from Macbeth that this is a hallucination. He begins asking the question, and he says, Art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation from the heat-oppressed brain? The idea there is of, of a fever dream, of something that is, uh, that is sick, but certainly after we've read Act 3, we maybe say that this is connecting to insanity. This is connected to madness. There's still reason here for Macbeth. In, in line 59, he says, there's no such thing, and he, he sees it for what it is, and he says, this dagger's not real. And there's some startling implications for that. You might expect Macbeth to act a little bit differently when he recognizes that there's no such thing. Maybe he would say, wow, even contemplating killing Duncan is making me go crazy. Even just, I haven't even done it yet, and I'm already seeing things, and there's this guilt that's weighing on me, uh, and maybe I should stop and not go through with this, because if it's like this now, what's it going to be like after I've actually murdered somebody? And you might expect Macbeth to go see the doctor. Why well, he's seeing things. He's seeing things that aren't there. This isn't a good or healthy thing for him. And yet, instead, by the end of the soliloquy, he's very much made up that he's going to go and kill Duncan. And so the end of the soliloquy is interesting and probably a little confusing. All this imagery speaks of witchcraft and murder, the wolf, wicked dreams, all this kind of dark supernatural imagery. He's referring to Hecate, the goddess of the moon and of witchcraft, and Tarquin, who uh, is, a, is a reviled Roman who raped uh, somebody and, and is reviled for that sin, uh, reviled for that crime. And so... Uh, he here in this, I mean, I would my argument for this scene is that Macbeth is almost this is his like pump up music, right? When when you guys work out, you don't listen to like classical music or or like you know things from the Baroque era. Uh, you listen to hip hop and you listen to hard rock and you listen to things that are gonna kind of like get your pu your blood flowing and your heart pumping. And Macbeth is doing the same thing. He's kind of drawing on some of these influences to get himself in that state of mind where he's ready to go and carry out this murder. And you might ask yourself, well, again, why? Why is he doing this? He knows that this is wrong. He knows already. He's beginning to see the negative effects it will have on him. Why commit this murder? Act 1, Scene 7, Line 27, Vaulting Ambition. He wants to be king. That's why. And so in this scene, then, he makes up his mind to go and kill the king. So I want you to watch this scene, too. It's from a different uh, telling of Macbeth. This is Ian McKellen starring as Macbeth and uh, Judy Dench starring as Lady Macbeth uh, through this scene. Think about the states of mind for both of them because there's a clear contrast between the two.